Anybody who spent any amount of time in Photoshop realizes that there's a lot of things that are hidden. A lot of things that you have to search for to find. And in some cases, there isn't even anything that you can find, but there's still a way to do things with hotkeys. It's kind of crazy. I'm working on this image from out of Oregon on Mulak Beach, and I realized that there's a lot of things I'm doing with this image that are like these hidden gems or cheat codes. I almost feel like I'm a kid again playing uh, my Nintendo and going up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, select, start to get uh, infinite lives in Contra. Anybody been there? You know what I'm talking about. So as I was working on this image, I came up with five hidden gems that I want to share with you that almost feel like efficiency cheat codes in Photoshop. Now, the first hidden gem that I want to talk about are hotkeys. You've probably heard the term hotkeys before, but hotkeys are a way that you can do just about anything in Photoshop using keys, the keys on your keyboard, to initiate an action. Typically, you're going to be using something like Control or Command, Alt or Option, or Shift. Sometimes it's Control Alt or Command Option or Control Shift or Control Alt Shift. And sometimes it gets a little crazy here. But essentially, hotkeys are the most efficient thing that you can learn in Photoshop today to speed up your workflow. Now, when I called Matt Kleskowski about this video, I said, Hey, dude, I need one more thing. What do you think I should do? He goes, Well, have you used the hotkey where you press and hold the Alt key and you can duplicate anything in your layer stack? I was like, No, what are you even talking about? <laughs> We'll get to that. Uh, so typically, the way I would duplicate any of my layers in my layers palette is I would press Command or Control J, and that would duplicate any layer in my layer stack. Now, what Matt was telling me is that you could press the Alt key and hold the Alt key and click on any layer and then move it down or move it up until you see this blue line appear above it or below it. Now, when you see that blue line appear, it means it's essentially duplicating that layer. And you can make as many duplicate copies of this as you would like. It's pretty awesome and it's pretty fast, much faster than pressing Command or Control J in order to get that done. Now that Alt or Option hotkey is something that I have used in my layers palette before, but it's typically been for duplicating a mask from one layer onto another layer. So what I'm talking about here is that this right here is a luminosity mask. And if we look at the luminosity mask that we have here, this luminosity mask, if I press and hold the Alt key and click on, or Option key, again, that key's coming up again, and click on the mask, it shows me where this is being affected in my image. And it's being affected in anything that is in the highest highlight areas is where this is taking effect, okay? So now, if I wanted to duplicate that and bring it down to here, there are many ways that I can do that. You can press the Control or Command key and click on that mask and make a selection for that area. And then you could copy that and translate that to this mask. But that's a lot of stuff that you have to do. Essentially, all we have to do to get this mask onto this layer is press the Alt or Option key, click on that mask, and drag it down to that layer. It's going to say, you basically already have a layer mask on there. Do you want to replace it? And I'll say yes. So you can opt so that that so doesn't show it again. And there we go. We have that layer mask on this area, which is essentially what I want for this image anyway, to create more contrast. The second hidden gem, this one actually truly is a hidden gem and you will not find it anywhere. It's something called stamp all visible layers. Now stamping the visible layers, essentially what that means is that the, you see this eyeball here, that's a visible layer. That's a visible layer. Now it's invisible. That's a visible layer. Now it's invisible. Uh, when you stamp all of your visible layers, anything that is in this layers palette that has the eyeball on it, it will create basically a carbon or Xerox copy of everything that's happening in this image on top of the topmost visible item in the layer stack. Now, the way that you do that is with a hotkey. And it's not a hotkey that you're going to find anywhere in Photoshop. It's the Control or Command, Shift, Alt or Option, and E. Control, Shift, Alt, and E. Command, Shift, Option, E on a Mac. Control, Shift, Alt, and E. And now I have a duplicate copy of everything that is happening below this. Now, this is a stamped layer. The beauty of a stamped layer is that when we turn all of the visibility off on everything below, we don't see what's happening below because this is all the pixel values of everything that has happened underneath here in one layer. Why would you use a stamp visible layer? Well, sometimes we want to do uh, some destructive things to this layer, like maybe make a Gaussian blur that is going to blur this image uh, and then put a blend mode on it like soft light that is going to create that Orton style effect. That's where a stamp comes in very handy. Now, I will prove to you that you will not find this hotkey anywhere. And the reason why is if we go over to the hamburger icon of our layers palette in here, you're going to see all kinds of things that we can do with our layers. 
Here is where we actually get all of the commands to merge layers. Merge visible is not the same thing as a stamp of all visible layers. Merging the visible layers will collide all of them down, but it will not make a duplicate copy of that stuff so that all that stays functional underneath that layer. When you merge visible, it just merges everything together and you lose all the work that you did underneath that layer. Flattening the image, we all know what that does. That's just gonna sandwich everything down and make everything appear as if it's one layer. There is nothing in here called stamped visible layer. Actually, the only place you will find this is if you go up to the help section, go to Photoshop help, you type stamp visible layers, press enter, you go to manage layers, and then you scroll down here to stamp layers. It's gonna take you to the Adobe Help X blog, and then you click on the link to stamp layers, and here is where you're gonna find the hotkey for that. How in the world are you supposed to find the hotkey for that other than doing this? It's pretty crazy how well hidden that one is. That one's definitely and truly a hidden gem. The third item that I have is probably something that you've heard me talk about 150,000 times on my YouTube channel, and that is the wonderful tool of Blend If. Now, Blend If is, I'm not gonna go too far and too deep into what Blend If is, but to me, it is the number one most beautiful hidden gem in Photoshop that if you're not using for efficiency in your workflow, you should be using it right now, today. And if you need help on that, I will put a, a playlist at the end of this video of all the Blend If tutorials that I have available to you on my YouTube channel. Essentially what Blend If is, is it's inside the layers styles. So if we look here, you see this thing that looks like two block boxes next to us? That's telling me that something is happening in the layer styles of this image. And if we look right here, we see that that is Blend If that is happening here. The beauty of Blend If is that any layer can have Blend If associated with it. This thing right here is called underlying layers. This is the way that I think is the most effective way to use Blend If. You think to yourself, I want to protect the underlying layers dark areas or protect the underlying layers light areas from receiving this effect. And that's exactly what's happening here. We are protecting all the underlying things that are happening underneath this layer from this in the darkest dark areas as we move this over and the lightest light areas as we move this over. You can see it kind of happening back here in these light areas. I like to couple this with a color overlay. And that color overlay that I like to use is a magenta color overlay. That way it's very easy for me to spot exactly where this layer is affecting my image. When I go back up to my blend if options here, if I move this over, press alt or option, move this over, press alt or option, move this over, that's where we were. Essentially what's happening now with this layer style of color overlay on here is it's showing us the blend if that is happening here for that specific spot and the mask that is happening right here for that specific spot. So we're seeing exactly what is happening to our image through this blend if and through the mask. So this is kind of a two for one because this color overlay using that in your workflow is also a beautiful hidden gem for efficiency for you to see exactly what's being affected in our image, specifically when you're using blend if and a mask together. So I'm gonna press okay on that. And if we look at this, we can see the color overlay here. We can turn that on and off and we've got that available to us. Now, the fourth thing I wanna talk about are actions. Actions are an extremely effective and efficient hidden gem in Photoshop. I call them a hidden gem because unless you have the window open for them, you probably don't even know they exist. Now, the window to open them is if you go up here to where it says window, you go to where it says actions. I have my actions stored over here. Now, typically if you go to window and you press actions, it's gonna free float. Well, I pull these actions over here into my menu bar with all my other panels. Essentially what an action is, is anything that you just saw me do throughout the process of even showing you this video, I could have been recording what was happening so that I could press stop and then press play at any given time and have it do the exact same thing that it just did on another image or even the same image again. Actions are a way for you to record something and then use it on another image later. One of those that I have is actually, this is specifically only for F64 Elite members. I'm gonna press play on this action to show you how effective these things can be. This is a landscape cheat code that I've created for the F64 Elite members for the month of November of 2022. When I press play on this, watch what happens. It's gonna pull up a solid color fill. That solid color fill is only going to be for my sky. 
This is basically a color grading cheat code where now at any given time, I can change the color of what my sky is going to look like at this sunset and make a beautiful sunset here. I'm going to add a little bit of a reddish magenta color to that. And look at that just totally transforms the sky. Now, when I press OK, it's not done yet. It's going to keep doing its action and it's going to give me another color grade for my foreground. And here I can choose maybe an opposing color grade, like maybe an orangish color or even a cyanish color. And what I get to control here through this act of color grading is where I want the viewer's eye to go to. Do I want to harmonize these two and make it so that the sky and the foreground have the same color grade? Or do I want to make a juxtaposition so the eye goes towards one place first over the other place? And doing that, I can make a cooler foreground, a warmer background. We're going to be more attracted to the sky, less attracted to the foreground. And or I could make this uh, a, a beautiful yellow orange color so that they uh, feel almost more of an analogous like analogous color scheme so they feel interconnected do i want them to be separated do i want them to be harmonized do i want them to be connected i liked it like this that looks great that leads me to number five my fifth hidden gem here is the blend modes probably heard of blend modes before so this is nothing new to you but what's happening with this and why this color grade is so effective is because of the blend mode that I'm using. And that's the hard mix blend mode. And you might be thinking that I'm an absolute crazy man for using the hard mix blend mode. Because when we move this all the way up to 100%, that's what hard mix looks like at 100%. That's what you see when you initially select hard mix blend mode on your image. Who in their right mind would use this? Well, the person that's in their right mind would know that there are eight blend modes that are specifically controlled by fill. Now, some of these blend modes like hard mix and linear light, those are two of those eight blend modes you'll find in other software. But if that other software doesn't have a fill adjustment, they're basically trash blend modes. So the hidden gem here is not just the blend mode, but that these eight blend modes work hand in hand with the fill adjustment. Notice how as I drop the fill, this actually starts to become something that looks pretty darn beautiful. So if I drop this to like 15% where I had it to begin with, we get this beautiful boost in contrast while also getting this gorgeous color grade. I've done a whole video on the hard mix blend mode and I've done a whole course on all of the blend modes on F64 Elite. You can tell that F64 Elite members get a lot of benefits over what you see here on YouTube, but those eight blend modes in particular that use the fill as the uh, secret sauce or the hidden gem to make them operate are color burn, linear burn, color dodge, linear dodge, vivid light, linear light, hard mix, and difference. Those are the eight blend modes that you can experiment with at a lower, I would say a lower fill, like 15%, and just see what happens when you use them on your images in your workflow. These five hidden gems are things that I think you need to be using right now in your workflow, and that's why I wanted to share them with you. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I like to take difficult things in Photoshop and make them seemingly simple so that you can use them in your workflow today. And don't forget to check out the playlist above for Blend If tutorials so that you can really begin to understand how to use one of the most powerful hidden gems in Photoshop.